Oh, it's another steamer in the pantry today. Um, recording this video. Welcome to uh, a collection video. Because these are the easiest ones to do at the moment. More importantly, it's an update on a previous collection video I did. I started doing these about three and a half years ago. Maybe four years ago, I can't remember now. And I've updated my collections a lot since then. I started doing it last year. I think we did the, the NES and the Super Nintendo updates last year, I think. Um, and I thought, well, it's probably a good time to go through some of these. I mean, I'm not going to update the Wii collection. I mean, quite frankly, you know, that took long enough to do as it is. And there are still a couple of big collections I've got to do. I've got the PlayStation 2 one to do. I've got the... Um, it's on my foot. I've got the... Um, Oh, yeah. uh, the Xbox to do and they'll be probably be the 8-bit ones but you know they, they're massive collections I'm not going to plan on going through those just yet so what I'm going to try and focus on is you know the Master System the Mega Drive which haven't been updated for quite some time and particularly the Master System collection has changed an awful lot since I started doing it so that's definitely going to be a decent one to do uh, oh, N64 because I've got some box code. Saturn I'll need doing, Dreamcast I'll need doing. Not adding an awful lot to those, but there may be people who've never seen them, I don't know. And, and obviously the quality of the videos back then probably weren't as good as they are now. But I'll leave you to make your own judgments on that anyway. Uh, so what we're going to be doing today is uh, the first one I thought, well I haven't done this one, it's probably this one actually... I, when I did this video originally I put together this with the, N, uh, with the NES because I didn't have many of all of the games. And this hasn't really grown a lot since I did it. I mean, I say I probably added maybe 10 games to it, 12 games to it since I started doing it. In fact, probably 12 games. I would say probably 12 games. And it is the system that I started on. It's, you know, we've all got the system we started on at home and, and, and what was the best, you know, what was our first introduction to it. Sadly, it's not my original one, but we're talking today about the old Atari 2600. There we go. In all its glory and blueiness. Extra 70s blue in us, there we go. So the Atari 2600, uh, which pro proudly sits in the games room. There we go. Uh, it's got the, the it's got the yeah, can you hear these lovely, I love the sound of that, proper equipment back there. Uh, for those of you not familiar with this, this, what looks to be made out of wood, it's not. If you've not seen one of these before, that's, that's plastic wood. Uh, and it actually, yeah, and they feel heavy. I mean, you know, you think actually, what's in here? There's a lot of weight to it, but they really shouldn't be. Uh, we got the power cable. That's the, um, the power cable. That's the connection to the aerial. So you will need an old television with an aerial point on the back of it. Uh, and then you got on-off switches. You got you can actually have your colour all black and white. That was a fun thing back in the day on the main telly when we used to plug it in. And you switch the from colour to black and white after for years waiting for colour television to come along you're actually playing black and white are you? I think it was designed for people who have black and white tellies um, and then there's obviously depending on the game you're playing there's an availability um, a difficulty switch for both controllers on the left and right hand side there's a game select uh, level there and a game reset which is very interesting didn't see too many of those this isn't one of the the old ones it, it feels like it's one of the new ones I think on the back there uh, you may or may not be able to read that, um, but it said it was made in Hong Kong, so I don't think it's one of the very high serial number. But anyway, uh, it's an Atari 2600, and this was the first system that I was in, exposed to, I suppose, really. Parents had one, their friends had one, so we were always swapping cartridges and stuff. I've watched videos since then, and have, have sort of spent many, many hours crying uh, at how much some games that I had all those years ago with the boxes and the manuals and how much they're worth and how difficult they are to get. Pitfalls have been a collector. When you weren't a collector you were a game. And my original 2600 didn't end up down, down the tip, no, it ended up at somebody else's house. I sold it. I sold the family game system to somebody at school for 30 quid back in 1988. Which then subsequently got stolen um, by this... He had, he had some brothers who were a bit, uh, shall we say, uh, near duels. And uh, they moved, they stole it from him basically, uh, and then they sold it on, and never to be seen again. So I don't know what ever happened to it. I don't really know. What a shame! What a shame! Uh, so this was bought for me by uh, a friend of Mrs. Bear, I believe, uh, for birthday or Christmas one year. Again, probably going back to 2008, 2011, uh, when I had that. And um, yeah, 
it, it's great. It doesn't work with that telly, the TMB telly. It doesn't work with that one. I don't know why. Works with other ones, though. Uh, but you, you can get it modified if you need to do so. Uh, you may wish to contact the Retro Repair Bear, who may be able to help you. Mm. If that's the sort of thing you're interested in getting in, and it's a system which I have a lot of affinity for. I mean, there are lots. I mean, I can't remember them all. There were so many, we, had, we had quite a lot of cartridges back then, uh, loads. And of course, with having somebody who we knew, we could swap cartridges with. So I got to play quite a lot. I mean, you know, passing through these grubby mitts over the years of games like The Empire Strikes Back, like Spider-Man. I thought that the Parker Brothers games you now the in slightly different cartridges. Uh, Springer passed through these hands. I'm pretty sure Sky Skipper did as well. Um, I forget the fact that the graphics look now terrible, the sound is terrible. Uh, it's just an iconic system, and if you played on that growing up, you, you know, you'd have an affinity to it. If you haven't played on the games, you're probably not likely to go back and revisit it, even though there are some really good games for it. I've got all the ROMs on emulator, so when I've done gameplay, so I've done gameplay of like uh, Frostbite and uh, Smurf and maybe a couple of others, I can't remember. They've been done off emulation, so I'm, I'm certainly case of, I haven't got cartridges for them, but I just find them very, they're very playable. The bottom line, and they might look rubbish, they might sound rubbish, but actually it's all, all about the playability, it always has been about the playability, and I spent hours stuck in front of this. I've got the original Atari joystick for it, which I haven't got in the room, but I don't have any paddles for it, and the paddles, which was the uh, idea for playing like Breakout, which is a terrible game anyway, but that's the sort of thing that you needed. I haven't got those, I don't think. At least I don't think I have anyway. Uh, this was the Atari 2600, it was all the Atari VCS, or whatever you want to call it that. Uh, it was superseded by the 5200, which only came out in America, I believe, and then the 7800, which I've got, uh, but hasn't got any games for it, and I've shown that off very recently. Um, I'm not going to show that in this video, it's going to be the 2600 only. But yeah, I mean, you know, it was it was brought all the old family together. I can remember, you know, some, some Sunday nights after we had tea. Was, I don't know about you, but back in those days, my mum used to, bless her, used to put a blanket on the floor in the, in the lounge and she'd make little sandwiches and things and we'd sit there and sort of you know, have a look at picnic and then we'd put the Atari on or watch what was on telly and um, have a bit of a family night in. It was, you know, ages sort of 7 to, to, to 11. It was great to do something like that. I had a birthday party the one year and a lot of people came around. We sat down playing Atari 2600 games. I think Enduro was... The favourite that night, if you never played that, it was like a racing game. A lot of these games never got no finishes and just carried on going into infinity. But the great thing about Enduro was uh, it, it incorporated different like weather conditions, so like a, a fog, but <laughs> would like practically just give you. It was a, it was a, a front-on racer, and it would just just give you your car at the bottom, and then blur everything else up. So you got no idea what was coming. It was it was how fast you really want to go. It was a very very clever race. Uh, at a night stage as well, it just went on and on, it's great stuff, one of, one of the great games. Uh, they, these games were just so playable, uh, and that's why people who had them back then enjoyed collecting for them. Mrs Bear said very recently, I wouldn't mind you collecting for the Atari 2600, which is all very well and good. And then she met somebody who does collect the Atari 2600, and they sort of said, oh yeah, oh some of those games, absolutely ridiculous prices, and she said, oh well perhaps not then. I think she wants me to have a box set, uh, some, some boxes, which I, you know, you, you can get, you know, I'll, I'll be honest with you, I've got 15 games to show off here, 14 of them are, are, are loose. Um, because, yeah, for some reason Atari, Atari cardboard is not as rare as Nintendo cardboard, I think you, you can still find a lot of Atari cardboard out there. Uh, what condition it is in is, is more questionable, um, but anyway. Uh, so I've got some of these in cartridge protectors, some I haven't because I've run out of cartridge protectors. So I didn't have enough <laughs> cartridges to, to put in protectors to start with, but now I have different. And I've also got some manuals as well, four games I haven't got, courtesy of donation. So um, we'll go through some of these. Anyway, I, I must be honest with you, I, I, I'd say probably some of these I know about and some of these I don't, which is weird. Um, so let's start at the top, shall we, and work our way through. Like I said, it's a small selection of games, so it's going to be relatively quick. Um, I'll just talk you through Atari cartridge, you've actually never actually seen one before as well. So the first game I'm going to show you is Air Sea Battle. Uh, and you'll notice on the front there's like a list of, there's a list. And if you're not familiar with that, I mentioned on the, on the console there's a game select. So you get the box and it would say, as it would say on this one, 27 games. 
and you think, wow, that's good value. 27 games in the cartridge. And, and they're, they're all there, so there's different styles. So games 1 through to 6 is anti-aircraft. Game 7 to 12 is torpedo. And it'll all be slightly different, um, depending on what the subject matter was. So if I've got some games, I might be talk about a bit in more detail a bit later on. Um, but yes, yeah, so that, that's what the cartridges look like. And if, and if you were lucky and people looked after them, you'd actually have that on there. It's one, one thing which was carried on with the NES. If you remember the NES had got the labels hung over the end. So, I mean, I stack my, my games like that, as most people would know. I don't stack them like that or, or what I stack them laid flat. So with this, you could stick this on a shelf and people will be able to see what it was. If you haven't got the box for it, you'll be able to see what it is. And the NES did, it, NES did it exactly the same. And if for some reason, I think the Mega Drive did, the mass system didn't. You, you, you got no way of knowing what the cartridge, you got loose cartridge, you got no way of knowing, no way of knowing it. Mass, uh, the NES did, and the Mega Drive did, and I think the Ameri uh, some of the American Nintendo stuff did, but a lot of the PAL stuff didn't. So when you've got a, like, a big loose cartridge collection, uh, unless you've got a unique way of labelling them, uh, that was the way to go. They're way ahead of their time on that one. Uh, I don't know anything about that one, I've not played it. Now, this is probably the most common Atari 2600 cartridge you will see. Uh, and they've also got little little labels on them, little numbers on them as well. Uh, so this is uh, CX2601. And this is combat, and this is based around tanks and planes and aircraft and all sorts. And again, hours of time spent playing that one. Uh, tanks was was the old we, we, they call it like tank pong. It's you know, remember the old game pong, you know, bip 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 side to side. You were two tanks in the maze or two tanks on the side of the screen, and, and, and the idea was you just kept shooting each other till the time ran out. Uh, what I used to find about this one was, was fantastic. You got biplane and jet fighter on this one, and it used to have um, you'd have like one plane or two uh, or even three. And you just you, you just, just one movement would control all three of them, and you have clouds strategically placed, or there would be games where you just disappear, so you'd both be you know not visible on the screen, you'd be flying around, no idea where you were, and just shooting. And if you hit somebody, they'd appear on the screen, and then you just keep going, going, going until you got them. Yeah. But most common cartridges are like that one combat, and yeah, I, I get very very enjoyable. One of the great things about the twenty six hundred was the art um, the artwork on the front of the boxes, which. I'll get to showing you some of the, the cartridges here. I'm going to leave these slight variations until the end. If I just do the, um, I'll just do the, uh, the, the, the Atari ones first. Uh, next one up is Space War. Uh, I don't know anything about that one. There's only uh, 17 games in that. Space War, Space War and Space Shuttle. I'm not sure, because my, my, my dear late friend John, Retro kit was a, a big Atari 2600 fan. I know he's given he, he's coupling here. He's uh, he passed on to me, uh, so I'm not sure if that's one of them. But again, yeah, loose cartridges for 2600 are very easy to pick up, and they're not overly expensive. Some of them can be a little bit cheap, uh, costly, but generally speaking, most of them are, are pretty pretty nice. And then the last plain one I've got. It's the game that we had actually had back in the day, like combat, and this is Video Olympics because obviously uh, you need an Olympics variation to different sports on there, and, and we, we were a big, you know, very big into sports as a family, so this was the ideal thing for us to have. Uh, so you've got variation. You've got something. It says pong. It says super pong, and there's foos pong, which is just just variations on the pong game. But we've actually got. Atari 2600 incarnations of soccer, hockey, handball, volleyball and basketball. So it's not really in the Olympics as such, because there's no gymnastics or swimming or anything in that. But uh, yeah, very, very playable. I remember the basketball one was a particular favourite. I don't think anybody can understand handball. Um, and there's, uh, there's like Pong and Super Pong, Foos Pong and Quadra Pong, which is what you have if you don't wash for a week. So those are the four plain cartridges. Uh, let's do some of the because uh, there's they're very different covered different covered designs on them as well. So let's try and break them down a little bit if we can. Do that. Um, so the next ones are Atari cartridges with uh, the picture of the box cover work on them, and this is the one that I, I, I'm famous in my own in my own head for this game. Uh, because this is what I played constantly, a hell of a lot of, and this is Space Invaders. 
Now, if you play the arcade Space Invaders, this is a, this a pared down version of this. But you see what I mean about the artwork? I mean, one of the great things about games from the 70s and 80s is, is the, the, the box artwork for them. Absolutely immense. Because in those days they didn't put screenshots on the back. Occasionally they would. I'm having a look at this box one here without actually... There are some screenshots on the back of that one, but not all the games had screenshots. And literally, it was just a coloured box. This was a blue one, if I remember. The picture on the front, uh, how many games you got on it, you know, say 52 variations of Space Invaders, which included Space Invaders, once again hidden, that you'd have to keep shooting for them all to appear, and, you know, blind Space Invaders. Uh, and, and, and a blue box with just some details, and about that was it. But I, I, I played that f so often when I was younger. Uh, to the point where, as I told you story many, many times, but if anyone heard it before, the Atari 2600 joystick, uh, I, I used to consistently take the inside of the skin off there um, because of the, using the joystick. Now, inside each box, and I can show you this one, because I've actually got the instructions for Space Invaders. Yes, I have instructions for Space Invaders. I'm pretty sure these came courtesy of uh, Liam, Retro Run. You took me a couple of bits here as well, but uh, yeah, show you the uh, so that, those uh, sort of interpretation of the graphics that you were getting, which is they're not it's more like an artist's interpretation of. Um, but yeah, it tells you there goes a number of games in there as well, so you can see basic game alternating turns. You're playing two player game, you could you know take one put one person play, then you take another go, you could play at the same time. Um, you could play at the same time, alternating shots. So that was that's an in innovative. Uh, and there's one like moving shields, zigzagging bombs. So when they were dropping uh, bombs on you, they'd sort of wobble there on the screen like that. Uh, fast bomb, which was crazy, and then invisible invaders where you were just firing around and hoping that you'd hit something. Um, yeah, and that's it. So there's a list of the invaders on the back there. But you're right, not a little, nice little thing to have that, but yeah, get that artwork is something else. It really is. I used to get one of those in every single game. And then the other one, which is um, just a, a, a standard Atari cartridge, and it's, it's one of the more recognisable games of the system, you Jar's Revenge, uh, which you, you're sort of, I'd say it's a giant moth is the best way to describe it. And you have to, they're, they're, you're on one side of the screen, but you can move around. On the other side of the screen, there's a, uh, a shield with an with a alien ship inside it. It follows one bullet at you, which follows you all the way around the screen. And the idea is you take away the, the defensive shield, and then you've got a, a super bomb, which you can fire at it and hit the space it once you've destroyed the force field around it. Uh, and it's, it's great fun. It's, it's one of the, the well-known, well-remembered games for the system. One of my dad's favourite. My dad didn't very, very play games, but he did like the old Yards Revenge. There is a sequel. I think if you've got the Evercade, I believe there's uh, the sequels on there as well. I don't think I've, I think I've played it, but I don't think I'm particularly impressed with it. Um, but yeah, it, it's just. I mean, again, have a look at some footage of that somewhere if you have. Uh, you can do it. It's, it's a great game for the limitations of this system. Don't forget, this is basic stuff. This is more basic than than you can imagine. Uh, but to actually produce games with certain elements of, of, of graphics and sound when, when you are literally programming onto the, the equivalent of a, a 1p piece it is amazing, it really is uh, now alongside those releases there uh, Activision uh, were releasing games for 2600 probably the most them and probably Parker Brothers were the most I think recognisable uh, producers of games for the system, which are slightly different in terms of how they like the cartridges out. Actually, we like to make things colourful. They did things like Pitfall, Keystone Capers, a couple of cracking games, which, which we didn't have, but um, our friends did. And I have a copy of Frostbite, which is one of my favourite games of all time. There is some gameplay footage of me having a go on this on channel after about 20 odd years and never actually playing it. Uh, and it, it, it's, a, it's a top to bottom jumper basically you have to jump on the white ice side to turn into blue to build an igloo and then you jump into that to move on to the next level uh you've got a various little um birds and clams and crabs and uh, 
things which will try and knock you off the ice floes. You can collect fish, and then later on, um, guarding the igloo is a polar bear. And you have to time your jumps. It, 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 you know, it, it is a game of reflexes, no doubt about it. And as mine have gone over the year, uh, over the years, I'm not quite as good as it used to be. But uh, there was a game. There was a challenge with this when this came out. There's a, I think it was like a forty thousand points challenge or something like that. If you got forty thousand points in those days, you took a photograph because we didn't have smartphones and things then. Uh, you took a photograph of your score. You then went to the photo developer shop and got your photos developed. Now this is really annoying because if your photo is at the front of a load of holiday snaps and you're not going to know them until July, you know, you know what I mean? It's, it's, it's strange. Um, and then you got the photograph, then you send the photograph to Activision. They would then look at your photograph and say, ah, right, he's got 40,000 points. And they would send you a badge, just as like, you know, as, as some sort of achievement. Strange, strange, strange times we used to live in. But yeah, just great fun. Just great fun. I'm, I mean, I still think it's one of the, the most playable games. Oh, I've missed a game out. I do apologise. Uh, oh, Human Cannonball, which hasn't got a protector on it. Missed that one off from the... Uh, that one there, you can see a, a bit of a missing label on that one. I don't know what that is. I've never actually played it. I'm guessing it's to do with being fired out of a cannon, perhaps. I don't know. Because you didn't know anything about that one, wasn't it, really? Right, the rest are in, or as they should be. Uh, got two of those and four of these. So, the Toy 2600, uh, as it went on, had a rebrand. They got rid of this old, dated 70s look. Went for a much smaller, sleeker, better designed, uh, plastic black with silver and rainbow elements to it. Uh, which is oh, it's all well and good. It's it's not the original, is it? You know, I think it's I think it's called the twenty six hundred junior. I think it is anyway. Uh, you know, if you come to this channel for historical accuracy, move on. Um, I can't quite remember. I never had one anyway. This was this was my model. I didn't really want one of those. So all the boxes which used to be different colours. So I mentioned the blue colour for Space Invaders. Frostbite was that colour box or I think there's a, there's a blue variation as well dark blue variation all the boxes to the new games all of some had this like, all silver and I'll illustrate that with a couple of manuals to show you uh, first one is Ms. Pac-Man so all the boxes now look like that pretty much if you, if you eliminated that writing and uh, no, actually that, is, that, 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 that would be a fair representation of the front of the box that would be it so that was the colour they went for it is all well and good um, and I've got more languages in here now as well. Are there any screenshots of the game I could show you? Possibly, yes, there we go. Because Pac-Man was one of the worst conversions ever on this system. I don't know, I, I had Pac-Man when I was younger. I, you know, I didn't know any better. I thought it was all right for what it was. I hadn't played, I didn't, I hadn't played Pac-Man in the arcade. The first Pac-Man I ever played was the 2600 version. So I grew up with that one. So for me, another shot of it there, there's Pac-Man. But yeah, all the boxes were like that. So different colour, so we, they've gone away from different colours to more uniform colour. And the other one I've got, which is the game we did actually have. And again, I believe these came courtesy of uh, uh, Liam over at Retro Run. Uh, they also started licensing titles. So we've actually got here Raiders of the Lost Ark. It's quite topical, because we've got old, old, old Indiana Jones back in the cinema, haven't we? Uh, but that was it, so they actually made a game about it. It's one of the most frustrating games ever. Um, my dad used to just drive my dad potty this game. Because he had to use two joysticks, if I remember correctly, for, for a certain part of the game. Because um, I, I, I haven't got it, I can remember very little about it. Some screenshots there. You can just see those, there we go, yep. But I, I see, you remember very, very frustrating and... You know, I, I didn't mind it as a game. It was quite... It was okay, but yeah, but license obviously ET was in ET, which talked about ET was in a similar box as well. Did they license any other films? I can't remember. Those only two I can remember. But the, the, the only two that, that come to memory. But yeah, so Ray's lost Ark. So in a manual for the game I haven't got. And so the cartridges changed design and shape, and they sort of came out very much looking the same. So they they had this. Still, we'll look to it, so we've got a copy of Crystal Castles, which is a game we did have. I absolutely love Crystal Castles. Not because there's a bear involved, because that is a bear. 
Uh, I just loved it. Uh, this was actually the, the problem with the limitation, the memory of the system, is that this wasn't a full version. You got a couple of levels, uh, which went on repeat. I think it was. Did you get three levels on this one? Can't remember. Um, and again, years later, when I actually played the proper game, the original game, I realised there was more to it. But one of my favourite games, Bentley Bear, there on the front. Uh, isometric platform game, I suppose, really, walking around collecting crystals while avoiding the enemies. And I used to think the graphics were really good on that. It was like a, a, a swarm of bees that used to come down with a buzzing sound to it. Uh, I thought the bear was really, really well drawn and animated. Uh, yeah, one of the better looking ones. I mean, not, not bright colours, but it was, it, you know, got the distinct impression it, 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 they'd had a bit of thought put into it. Uh, a couple of classics here now. Uh, both, unfortunately, sadly got um, label damage. But that was down to the shop I bought them from, uh, sticking labels on the front. So we got a copy of Centipede. So we yeah, missing bits off that one. That's why it was so cheap. But there was actually a label. So I just took a label on that. And the advice was, as they do with labels, oh, you yeah, know, just uh, get a get put some little bit of heat on it. Yeah, that's exactly what happened. Put a bit of heat on it and peeled most of the front of the label off. Anyway, there you go. Uh, Centipede, arcade classic. Uh, and the other one, which has sadly got some damage onto it as well, uh, which is Galaxian. And that's got label damage on the front, and it was already missing that bit as well. So that bit was missing when I got it. And again, sticking the label on it. Uh, since then, I believe they've changed their uh, policy to stick the prices on the back of the cartridges. But again, an uh, another classic Galaxian. It's cropped up on many Atari. If you've got an Atari 2600, um, you know, these at game variations or the Evercade, you, you, you're going to come across that game quite easily. And the last one I've got, I think this must have come from John, um, is Sword Quest Earthworld. And I believe there were three or four games in this series, and, and the idea was that they were, I think there was Water World, certainly, maybe Fire World, something like that. But I believe there was a series of here, Sword Quest games. And he had to play them through in sequence, and I think there was a prize. Something, anyway. I mean, again, it's not the sort of game I would have played years and years ago. It's not the sort of game I play now, but just nice to have something like that. And again, it's a game I've read about and heard about this this, this sort of competition, and, and, and that sort of comes into folklore on that one. I mentioned Parker Brothers earlier. Parker Brothers were... Uh, over time, the Atari 2600 gradually, Atari gradually just lost the control of the situation. You know, if you've not heard about the video game Crash, go and read about it. I'm not going to tell you about that. But anybody and everybody, Activision broke away from Atari, started making their own games, and everybody else, yeah, you know, anybody else who could put an Atari cartridge together, started making their own games for it. Parker Brothers had the, the same sort of thing, and they got, but they got licenses. We talked about licenses earlier. They had licenses. I mentioned Spider-Man. They had Popeye, the arcade game. Um, Sky Skipper was one as well. So they were releasing really big name titles. Uh, and one license they got, and I know, I know this one definitely, I think, came from John, <laughs> uh, is <a> Strawberry Shortcake. <laughs> Strawberry Shortcake uh, musical matchups. Now, I believe this, is, uh, this was a short lived doll series, much in the lines of things like Cabbage Patch Kids and things. Uh, but you can see the difference in the cartridge design there. So we've got this rather nifty looking design down the side here, this V shape on the front. Uh, again, going with this, this whole label identification thing as well, in case you took your cartridges out of the box, because people actually used to encourage you to do that. Believe it or not, they were, used to be, oh, you can line your cartridges up like this, get rid of the boxes. That's where it all started back in the day. And there you can see uh, Parker Brothers logo there as well. But the, if you ever see a Parker Brothers game boxed, it's going to have a big silver box, different in inlay as well. Tootie's got loads of these. If you, if you, yeah, Tootie's one of my, you know the the guy for me in the know. For, he's got a lot of 2600 stuff lately. So if you go in and have a look at Stu's channel, you can see some of the marvellous 2600 stuff he's picked up. And the other game I've got there, uh, I had a, a Star Wars game. I had two Star Wars games from Parker Brothers. One was uh, Empire Strikes Back, which is just basically a level or a, it's a, again, continue, just a continuing loop uh, of stopping the, the attack walkers attacking the Hoth base. And the other one, which nobody seems to like, but I seem to have a real joy for, is Jedi Arena, 
which is again taking, uh, if you remember the part in Star Wars, if you know Star Wars where Luke is training on a lightsaber against a, a floating droid, the idea of deflecting any shots at him, it, it, it's basically that, but you're playing against somebody else. And it's, it's got, it gets very, very negative reviews. I don't understand why I thought it was great. I used to love that game. And I've actually got one of the Star Wars games. And again, I think this came from John. Or he might have bought it when we were out somewhere and said, there you go, I bought that for you. Um, and this is Return of the Jedi um, Hoth Star Battle. Not the greatest condition, but it's an Atari 2600 cartridge, you know what I mean? Well, these cartridges look great, don't they? I really do like, compared to just the standard black square that you got. But yeah, really, really nice that. But again, I, I, I came from John, didn't it? And then we've got a sealed game. We finish on a sealed 2600 game. Wow. Wow, wow, wow. Um, and this again was sent to me by, by Liam over at Retro Run. The only problem it's got is the fact, because it's been sealed for so long, the boxes, you, you, from what I understand, again, these are things I learn as I go along. I don't know these things until somebody casually mentions this happens. I go, does it really happen? And then I look into it further and go, yes, it does. And this would explain the condition of this one, sadly, which is a bit of a shame. Uh, but it's also one of my favourite games. I've got this game so many different times and so many different systems. I don't even know it came out of the 2600. It's clacks. Now, I remember right at the very end of the 2600's uh, lifespan, the games like Kung Fu Master and Ghostbusters, the original 8-bit uh, game, and uh, Double Dragon. Rampage as well, and Clax came out for the 2600. They were all, I mean, I mean, I mean, I own Kung Fu Master, which I thought was actually pretty good for, the, again, limitations of system. Getting just on a continual loop, I thought it was great. Ghostbusters was terrible. Uh, I don't, I, I've not played this one, obviously, it's still sealed. But I didn't know Clax came out. I played it on emulation. It's, it's, it's a sort of game that would work on the 2600 because you don't need much. All you need is a black screen and some, you know, coloured blocks walking towards you and stacking them up, you don't need to be fantastic. But what you'll just see, just have a look at the top there, you can see where that's squashed in. And I believe this is because, obviously, the shrink wrap's been on it for so long, it's, it's got some sort of detrimental effects on the bottom. You can just see there's some bowing on the side as well. Uh, particularly at the back there, that's sort of sucked in a bit. Where the cartridge is there, you can feel where the cartridge is. That's fine, but this bit down here where it's hollow is sort of sucked in. And there is actually also, a, sadly, there is a rip in the but it's also got a hand tab, you know, the old, old bear likes hand tab, lovely. There you go, that's what it looks like, and I can just see there. So, you know, it doesn't need to be anything spectacular. It works, so it works really well on 2600. Uh, and I didn't even know they came out for it, so uh, Liam sent me this last year, I think it was. It's one of my, uh, my favourite games, so thank you again for that, Liam, brilliant. But yeah, it's the only one I've got in my system that's boxed, in my collection that's boxed. I mean, yeah, it's only 15 games there. Um, I wish I had more to talk about and show you off, I used to have loads, you know, I used to have loads, but it's a system, it's a system that means so much to me, nostalgically, and I think one of the, the key things about this is nostalgia, if you've got no nostalgia for this system, you're not going to collect it, same as you wouldn't go and all of a sudden start collecting for a Spectrum, because you've got no nostalgia for it, and you go out, you know, you can go out and buy one of these things and pick all these cartridges up and go, but they're not very good. And then you, well, yes, obviously. There are, there are enough systems out there for you to be able to own a compilation disc. There's the Atari Anthology for PlayStation 2. Um, there are countless. Uh, you could even, you PlayStation 4, the Atari Flashback collection. You can buy an Atari Flashback console, like a mini console, and it'll be loaded with 100 odd games. So you don't need to throw too much at it to experience it. Uh, you know, my advice, probably, if you've got a PlayStation 4 or, or that generation, uh, and you can find this, the flashback uh, games, they, they don't cost an awful lot. You probably get them for, for under a, under eight quid, I think, brand new, and they don't cost an awful lot. Uh, they'll look rubbish on your PlayStation 4 and your modern television, but you'll see what it's all about, and you haven't got to go out and, and, and spend money on something like this. But for me because I grew up with this, this is something that I want to have the original hardware on. I know I mentioned earlier I play the games off emulation, but that's because it is actually easier for me to set that up rather than just play them on here. Uh, I, I wouldn't be able to record the footage on it anyway because of the way the system's set up, so I, I'd have to emulate it anyway. But yeah, to me this is just nostalgia in, in, in a, a rather tasty 
nostalgia pie, which I love dipping into every year and again. It's what put me on the path to where I am today. That's all we can say. Isn't it, really? Right, so uh, that's the Atari 2600 brought up to date. I will start working my way through my other systems. There are obviously a couple, like I said before at the start, that will take some time. Uh, but I think it's probably worthwhile doing, especially as, uh, as yes, just isn't like a good time to do it and, and try and catch up and, and bring things up to date and actually find out what I've actually got. That's the other part of it as well. Have I got all these games? Yes, I have. Was I aware I had all these games? No. I might find stuff I didn't realise I had. It's always interesting, isn't it? If you ever watch, go and watch my PlayStation 1 collection video, and you'll find me opening up a box to a game that I've had for about 10 years and there's no game in there. That's sported for you, but I won't tell you which one it is. It's a long video as well, let's go all the way through that. <laughs> So always something interesting to find in these. Have I got, oh, bits and find extra stuff stuffed in them anyway. Uh, if you've enjoyed that, yeah, the, the like, subscribe button there is for you to do stuff with. Uh, but until I raise you another video, this is the Retro Bear who's going to go and get outside and get some fresh air because it's incredibly stuffy in here now. And probably the carbon monoxide will be slowly killing me. Uh, thanks for watching. I'll talk to you again soon. Take care. Bye-bye.